This is my grandmother, Muriel Rowe. Don't you love these old photos? I'm showing you her when she was in her younger years, when she was full of vitality, before she was diagnosed with dementia. The brain disease took so much from her before she passed away. I bet there's someone in your life, maybe a family member or a friend who is suffering from Alzheimer's. It's a horribly common disease. In 2020, an estimated 210,000 North Carolinians were living with Alzheimer's. That number is actually probably an undercount. And in 2022, 369,000 North Carolinians were providing unpaid care to their loved ones with dementia. So the news this week that there is now another FDA-approved drug, denanumab, made by Eli Lilly under the brand name Kisunla to slow the progression of Alzheimer's really caught my attention. Another drug means more competition in the market, more options for people now, and more hope that by the time I get to my grandmother's age, these drugs will be covered by insurance, or at the very least, they'll even be more sophisticated and effective than they are now. Because at this time, even though the drugs have FDA approval, experts are still skeptical about the risks and the efficacy of these drugs. So to help us understand how this new drug works and some things that you need to know that you may have only missed if you saw just the headline is our WREL health reporter, Grace Haber. Thank you so much for being with us. Uh, first question to you, how do these drugs work? Well, firstly, you know, your story and your grandmother's story is one that I think a lot of our viewers can relate to, unfortunately. And the way that this drug works is a key marker of Alzheimer's is the buildup of beta amyloid plaque in the brain. And this new drug is known chemically as denanumab, and it works to essentially remove that plaque buildup. Now, unlike Lakembi, which is already on the market, Kisunla only needs to be administered once per month compared to twice. So that's going to make it pay easier for patients to make it to those appointments, reduce some of those transportation barriers. Now, it's important to note, though, that this is not a cure for the disease, but it has been shown to slow the progression by about 22% compared to a placebo group. That's buying patients valuable time. It means more independence, time for birthdays, holidays, even just time to get end-of-life affairs in order. So ultimately, this gives patients another option and physicians a choice, which really is something they just haven't had. Mm, it's interesting. You spoke with the Alzheimer's Association, Eastern North Carolina chapter. What did they have to say? What's yeah, I spoke with the executive director, and she essentially called it a major step forward for hope. Take a listen to what else she had to say. You hear from individuals that are living with this disease every single day um, that they just want, they feel like they've been, time has been stolen from them. The biggest difference between the placebo and the treatment itself was at 18 months. So could you imagine extended time with your loved ones to make your own decisions? I think that's part of it, right? You want that that control and that, that potential to be able to make your, those own decisions Absolutely. for yourself. This doesn't come with small cost, right? It's about $32,000 for a year of treatment for those who need it for that long. And some doctors are skeptical. What's the concern here? Yeah, and there is hope that Medicaid and other insurance providers will step up to help alleviate some of those financial burdens for these patients. But as with any new drug, when it comes to market, there is going to be some skepticism. And the main issue with this drug that we saw was brain swelling and bleeding, which are both things we've seen occur with other plaque targeting drugs. Still, it received a unanimous recommendation recommendation from the FDA Advisory Council and a potential benefit to reducing any possible unknown long-term effects of taking this medication is that patients could actually stop taking Kisunla once their plaque had been reduced to a certain level. Yeah, that's one of the big mm -hmm. benefits that they say about this. Okay. All right, Grace. Thank you. Of course.